when you're a hoarder like me and you need some salvage for a project, you just go to your backyard, your side yard, your junkyard. Real life Jamie here. So I want this porch post in my basement. We used it for a market, so Zeb sunk it in a bucket, but we're not gonna be using it for that anymore. So I'm gonna have Zeb cut it off, and hopefully it's tall enough for what I'm looking for. Oh, for sure. It's way over eight feet. Are you sure? Yep. All right, well, I want three of these, so I'm hoping I can find three porch posts. We're gonna cut them down, and we're gonna be doing a salvage wall. We're gonna show you how to take all your chippy old doors and salvage and tin and windows and create a treatment that's a focal point for your house. So these three beauties are gonna be the center of my salvage wall, but they have been outside and we have chickens and spiders and oh my. I'm using bathroom cleaner and I'm gonna hose them down and then we'll spray them with a hose. Then we'll flip them over, spray them with this, hose them down, let them air dry, and then I'll wipe them down and you know, you get most of the dirt off. If you're a neat freak, you may not wanna put this in your house because there's no way to get all the dirt off. Maybe if you took them to a car wash. So we have this big flat wall back here and there's not enough space behind the couch, between the couch and the wall to put any kind of furniture, but that wall is gonna be in a ton of photos every time I photograph my basement. So I thought it'd be fun to use some salvage and then create a whole architectural wall made up of salvage. Lucky for me, I have a whole backyard full of junk that I've been saving for a project just like this. All right, so we measured this wall and it's a 16 foot wall, so eight feet. This is the middle right here where these holes are actually and this is where we're going to start our wall we're put, we'll put the tallest door in the middle and the other two doors on the side and then we'll put the pillars and then we'll see if we're going to fit in some windows All right, so we're actually gonna flip them the way it is on the right side and not the left side, because I like the detail on the right side. And we're definitely gonna need some windows. So we gotta go shopping in the trailer. I'm installing the French cleats now. And I'm just putting this right in the center of the door. Two screws is fine on this. It's not gonna be actually holding the weight. It's gonna be resting on the floor. This is just to keep them from tipping over. Jack gets back here or whatever and he's messing around or throwing a ball. I don't want him falling over on the kids. All right, so before I move the door out of the way, I measured down and my cleat rests right at 16 and a quarter inches. And I also measured, marked where the center of the door is so that I know right where to put this. And I'm just gonna use the back end of this, this aluminum. It'll make a nice little mark on the wall here. I guess I could get a pencil out, but who's got time to go find a pencil? Okay, so these kits come with these fun little spirit bubbles so that I know that that's level right there. Found a stud with that one. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out because I'm gonna use it on the others because I only got one with the kit. Let's lift it up a little. And that's hung. That's not, that's not coming off the wall. So now I just need to do that with the rest of these and then we'll go ahead and put the windows up that Jamie's washing up right now. So these pillars go floor to ceiling. So instead of being able to set them up on, I need to be able to slide them over onto the cleat. So I measured for that because I can't lift them up onto it, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so we are all finished. For now. For now. We'll probably end up putting some cool corbel lamps on those wall or on the wall somewhere or on the door. Or like a, a 
table with core bowls underneath each window and then candlesticks oh, on each side. Yeah, something. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's the thing about decorating is I feel like I'm always doing it in layers, but I can't just like put stuff on the wall. I need like added texture. And so this is a great way to add texture and some dimension. And it's still fairly neutral. Yeah, so. and, and we don't have like a concise plan. We're just kind of, let's put this on and see what it looks like. And if we don't like it, we'll change it out. And it can't be like what everybody else has. I don't think I've seen anybody with this particular arrangement. It's pretty hard to find all of this good chippy salvage all in one Except spot. Except for me, I just go on the side of the house and the yard and the trailer and all my hordes of stuff and just pick out the good stuff. It's been years collecting it. These porch posts were holding up a shed on the side of a carport and I dug them out before they demolished the house. <laughs> and then I don't even know, did you put anything else up there to help hold it up? Yeah, I had a 4x4 four four that I found in the yard and I propped that up so the shed didn't fall on me while I was taking he's them out. All, he's all about the safety when we're doing demo. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Anyways, I just hope it inspires you to maybe take some things that you have or that you know you have access to without spending a dime. How much did this cost in cleats? So I used the $20 cleat that was this long, I don't know, probably 24 inches long, and I just cut it down and all of this instead of costing $7.99 per cleat, was 20 bucks. Oh, so you didn't buy an extra one at Home Depot? Don't we, didn't we already have one? Yeah, but I didn't cut that one up yet. Oh. Well, there we go. 20 bucks, crap from the yard, wall done. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, comment with any questions you have about salvage or hanging salvage. I know we get asked all the time, like, how we hang up our doors and windows. We always want to make sure they're secure so that way they're not going to fall on any small child that might be running past. We always make sure they're really clean and that they're not going to like chip paint all over the floor. So that's yeah. why we clean them before we brought them inside. Those are like really important things. And then as far as what to like what to look for when you're looking for salvage, I just say like anything that looks interesting to you, use it. You'll find, you'll find somewhere. Yeah, architectural salvage can pretty much be stacked and used anywhere. Like I could find an old finial or something and throw it in front of the fireplace and done. Yeah. Or you can just go to the store and buy new stuff, but that's boring. So anyways, comment below with any questions you have about what we did here or anything you'd like to see us do in the basement. And be sure to subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.